Hello, this video is for Module 3, Part 2, and includes a discussion of the Gestalt Principles, which are part of data visualization. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. So the Gestalt Principles are the principles or ideas of enclosure, connection, proximity, and similarity. And these are used to determine how we visually perceive the grouping of objects. Gestalt is a German word that indicates shape or form. So a comprehensive list of the Gestalt principles is difficult to attain as there are varying interpretations of the exact meaning. For example, Stephen Few in his book, Show Me the Numbers, lists the principles that are closely related to the grouping of objects, whereas others have widened that definition to include the concepts of foreground and background, and also the idea of focal points. Here we're going to stick to the definition that is closely tied to the grouping of objects. So again, the Gasol principles that are going to be covered here are enclosure, connection, proximity, and similarity. We will start with the weakest and move up through this list here. So the Gasol principle of similarity is where a characteristic, such as shape or color, is used to create homogeneous groupings of objects. So in the following here, we have information about teenagers and the degree to which they feel this is a problem amongst their peers. So anxiety and depression, that's a major problem for teenagers, as identified by this survey. We have different topics here, and then the level of the um, how big of a problem this is for them. You can see that the authors of this graphic have easily allowed, created a similarity here in the dark green color across major, kind of a lighter green there for minor, and even a lighter green there for the not a problem at all. So my mind is easily able to connect these dark green objects together, and I am to make comparisons between those. Okay, these would be making comparisons using the idea of position along this axis here, all on an aligned scale here. So it's using the position EPT. Again, the coloring, the choice of coloring here has easily allowed me to compare across major, compare across minor, and compare across not. Now what I've done is did something different. I decided to color by the different topics here, anxiety and depression, bullying, etc. And I would say that this is a bad version of this graph because my mind does not know what I'm supposed to be comparing here. I certainly am using the darker color to lighter color, as was used up here, but I have decided that I want every topic to be a different color. It is much harder for my mind to figure out what needs to be compared in this bad version of the graph compared to the version that was given. So this graph here is a much better design, is done much better than my graph that I've created here. Again, the color or similarity allows me to do that. So let's just talk about similarity kind of in a more generic way. Here I have a set of 16 dots, and our minds tend to see this as one group of 16 dots. But if I do something like this, where I change the color of some of them dots, my mind sees not one set of 16 dots, but I see two sets of dots. I got some gray dots and I got black dots. Again, what I'm invoking there is the similarity principle. Because I've made some of these dots similar to others, we can identify them as separate groups, or we tend to identify them as separate groups. I can use color to do this, or I could use shape to do this. So here I've identified two different shapes. Again, I see two different groups, okay, circles and triangles here. Or if I really want to 
hit the idea of similarity home, I suppose that I could use color and shape. So now I'm making it even easier for my mind to identify the two groups here in this situation. How about the idea of proximity? The idea of proximity suggests that objects that are close to one another will be interpreted as a group more than objects far away from one another. So here we have a graph on air pollution in four different world regions. This visualization uses proximity by putting all the India locations together in one bunch, all of the China locations together in one bunch, the European Union, and then also the United States. This graphic also uses similarity, so all of the locations that are from India are the same color, likewise for the other world regions. So this graphic is using similarity and proximity. What happens if I remove the proximity? So again, I created a bad version of this graph. And in this graph, I have not stuck with the proximity. So here, what I did instead is I just sorted the air pollution levels from largest to smallest. You can see that some of these are in India here at the high end, but I also have an India here and an India down here. I can see that some of the China regions are here, but I also got Hong Kong way down here. Again, it's kind of hard to connect Hong Kong to these other China regions because it's so far away from the others. If we consider the graphic up here, I can see that Hong Kong is very close to the other China regions. Also down here at the bottom, it appears that the European Union and the United States are just kind of all intermixed here. The blue and the orange there tend to be intermixed on that lower end, at least for some of the cities. Again, this visualization I think is better in that the proximity principle is being used to keep different locations within the same world region together. Again, let's just look at a set of uh, 16 dots here that are seen as one group. I can move some of these dots away from the others. And when I do that, this appears to be two groups now, this group over here of four and this group of 12. And what has what I have done is just separated them from one another. So this is a group over here because these are close to one another and not close to these. So there's two groups here. Again, I can use the idea of proximity and similarity to make sure that we understand that there's two groups here. How about connection? Connection is when objects are joined together oftentimes with lines. The connection principle is stronger than proximity and similarity, but it is weaker than the Gasol principle of enclosure. So consider the following visualization that just communicates the stress levels of Gen Z adults compared to all adults. This is from the American Psychological Association with the source given here. Because they have connected these dots here, this would be the Gen Z adults from 2018, 2019 to 2020. Because they have invoked the connection principle, my eye is drawn to compare this 5.6 to this 5.8 to this 6.1. And I can see that the rate of stress for Gen Z adults has gone up. In fact, it's gone up more than what I'm seeing with all adults. So again, the connection here says that this 4.9 is connected to the 4.9 is connected to the 5.0 here. That's the connection principle that's doing that. And it's drawing me into these three being together or a group. And that allows me to understand what's happening over time. Oftentimes, when we are displaying information over time, we invoke the connection principle. On the bad version of this graph, all I've done, the only thing that I've done is just remove the connections. It's much harder for my mind to figure out what should be compared to one another. In fact, my mind, I guess, wants to compare this 5.6 to this 4.9, just because they're close to one another. 
They are dissimilar. This is red. This is black. But my mind wants to compare these two because they're in close proximity to one another. Even more so than the similarity. So this is red here. This is red here. This is red here. So similarity is wanting me to compare across here. Okay, but I think proximity is stronger than similarity for me anyway. But when I have connection there, there's no doubt what I should be doing here. I should be comparing the 5.6 to 5.8 to the 6.1. I should be comparing this information over time, as was intended with this graphic. Again, let's look at just a simple case. Here I have the 12 dots. I'm going to connect them with a vertical line here. So here I can see that I have three groups because of these connections, three separate vertical groups here. And the next graphic, I'm going to even separate them further. So these are separated further in a vertical direction than they are horizontally. But however, I see three groups still because of the connection principle. Some of you might say, well, this here is a group and this is a group this is a group and this is a group okay for you you're using proximity to define that group all right but for me because of the connection there i see three vertical groups and i'm not connecting these four different sets of three objects now i can make this a lot harder and a lot more confusing by doing the following so suppose i do something like this now I'm not sure. I mean, I think the connection principle still is fairly strong, but I've identified these as being something similar to one another because I've changed the color and also changed the shape. I suppose in this particular situation here, there are a variety of levels of groupings that could take place. For example, I could say, well, one grouping is the gray versus the black. So I have one group here and I got another group here. Somebody else might say, well, these are all in close proximity to one another, so that forms a group. These are in close proximity to one another, so that forms a group. If you are doing that, you would identify one, two, three, four different groups. Or if you rely on the connection principle, you would have three different groups. So this here, to be honest, is a kind of a mess. I have a bunch of different Gasol principles that are being used here. And this is difficult for my brain to figure out what type of groupings you want me to use. This is much more difficult than, say, this, where everything is similar and the only thing that I'm using to identify the three different groups is the connection principle. How about the enclosure principle then? So here's a classic example of the enclosure principle. This is in regards to mental health of children in England. And with these boxes, that's what we mean by enclosure there. We're just enclosing all of this information. And my mind is going to group everything that's in this box kind of together. These percentages, these bars, these labels, the title, all of that gets kind of grouped together into one here. And then I have that same information over here on the right for girls. The enclosure, pr enclosure principle here is at work. Now, you don't have to have a physical boundary to have an enclosure principle. Sometimes there's just a dividing line that would separate the boys from the girls. Most of the time when we say enclosure, we are talking about the uh, boundary, but that's not a necessary condition there. Once again, if we do this in a generic way, we can see that I have two groups here. Even if I increase the um, distance between Okay, this set compared to these. These middle two columns here, these dots in the middle two columns, belong with these over here because of the enclosure principle. Even though these two columns are closer to the column on the right, the enclosure, prin enclosure principle says, no, I want these two columns to go with these dots over here on the left. And the enclosure principle trumps connection as well. So when I look at this, again, I'm seeing two groups, the three columns on the left and the one column on the right. Even though these two are connected to one another, in my mind, the enclosure principle trumps that. So this dot right here belongs with these more than it belongs with this dot, just because I have enclosed 
those four together as one object. So again, the strongest principle is typically considered enclosure, then connection, then proximity, and the weakest is similarity. So your task for this particular module is to simply just look at this graph and tell me what Gasol principles are being used in this graph. I've done that with another example here. So here's a second example. Just tell me what Gasol principles are used in order to uh, in this visualization. And then the last example down here is a graph that I found that I found was kind of difficult to understand. So my question is just is this graph, graph excuse me, effective? Um, and then provide a discussion of why you think it is or is not. To be honest, for me, I don't think that's the most effective graph, but provide some discussion as to why you think that might be the case. Okay, that does it then for Module 3, Part 2. Have a good night.